I think it would be fun to contrast her writing mm. style with that of the books that were more the sweet stories that were more for the public. Well, you and I can do some kind of reading challenge at some point. Oh, okay, sounds fun. Yeah. I recently read Little Man. I want to do a review about it. The the way we're doing our reading and our movie challenges, we're doing a different movie every month and a different book every other month. And we st- we're starting our movie challenges on the 15th of every month. And then we're starting the reading challenge challenges or like discussions, I should say. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. The discussions of the challenges on the 1st of every other month. We are starting to discuss Little Men starting March 1st. And we'll discuss that for oh, the length okay. of two months. And then we'll do Joe's Boys. We miss you. We miss you in the group. Oh, it's, it's a really nice group. When I was younger, I really loved Little Man at some point. I read it all the time. I just started it again last night. So I just read the first chapter last night. I forgot how much I liked it. And I and there's a part of me that's like, do I like little men better than I like little women? I, I might. I might actually like it better. It very much pulls you in. And I, I don't know that I really felt as much that way the last time I read Little Women. I know that when I read it when I was a teenager, it was like I couldn't put it down. I read the whole thing in one day. I'm like, that's insane. <laughs> that's insane. <laughs> I read all of, and I mean part one and part two in, in one day. I realized when I was reading it, one of the reasons why I liked it, it was because I kind of had a crush on Nat when I was younger. Okay. Now when I think about Nat, it's more like a maternal feelings that I have for him. Then mm-hmm. I've heard A lot of people saying that they kind of felt the same with Laurie. When they were kids, they kind of fell in love with Laurie. But now when they read it, they have the similar feeling that Joe has for him. It's like maternal. I I don't want to hurt you, but (laughs) you're not being productive. And I had the same with Nat. I didn't have that with Laurie, but with Nat for some reason. But then I read it and well, Nat and Laurie are very similar. Yeah, and well, and then Lori's the one who sends Nat to Joe to begin with, yeah. And Nat is a musician. Musician, yes. And then he ends up with Daisy, and Daisy is very much like Amy because Daisy tells Nat to stop daydreaming. Yes, and she's also hyper-feminine, too. Yeah, very strong parallel there to Lori and Amy. That was interesting, but I also read it because it had so many John Friedrich scenes that I liked. When the parting came, he affected high spirits to conceal certain inconvenient emotions, which seemed inclined to assert themselves. This gaiety did not impose upon anybody, but they tried to look as if it did for his sake, and he got on very well till Mrs. March kissed him with a whisper full of motherly solicitude. Then feeling that he was going very fast, he hastily embraced them all round, not forgetting the afflicted Hannah, and ran downstairs as if for his life. Joe followed a minute after to wave her hand to him if he looked round. He did look round, came back, put his arms about her as she stood on the step above him, and looked up at her with a face that made his short appeal eloquent and pathetic. Oh, Joe, can't you? Teddy, dear, I wish I could. That was all, except a little pause. Then Laurie straightened himself up, said, it's all right, never mind, and went away without another word. Ah, but it wasn't all right, and Joe did mind, for while the curly head lay on on her arm a minute after her hard answer, she felt as if she had stabbed her dearest friend. And when he left her without a look behind him, she knew the boy Laurie never would come again. Do you think Joe ever identified with Laurie? With him being a boy. You know, I think so. I do think so. Like to, And I, I feel like the 1994 film did a good job of showing this, like with and introducing him into the Pickwick Society and stuff mm. and the behavior, like the way that Winona Ryder portrayed the character. I do think so. I think that when they were younger, but I think by this point in the novel, I think that she's coming into her womanhood more. And so... That's probably part of the reason why she feels so inclined to reject him because she knows that's not what she wants. She doesn't know what what she wants yet, but she knows what she doesn't want. And she knows she doesn't want her boy to be her man. It reminds me of that quote from Christine Doyle where she writes that Laurie represents fascination of Joe's youth 
and Friedrich the fascination of Joe's adulthood. Mm-hmm. And then Louisa May Alcott has this fascination to this idea that the character grows when they move on from an unsatisfying relationship to the one that works, which makes sense. But also yeah. it's an adulthood ritual when you do that. Well, and, and look at look at Louise May Alcott's relationships, right? You know, her relationship with, I always forget how to pronounce his name, Ladislas, what is his name? Laddie. Laddie. <laughs> yeah, his, so her relationship with Laddie, like clearly there were ways that he made her feel special mm-hmm. and made her feel maybe a little more alive because she's already been through her unrequited love with Thoreau. We know that Friedrich is like her idealized love, which is with Henry David Thoreau. And I I think that it's not as simple as, oh, this was a bad one and this one's a good one, because Joe's relationship with Lori definitely serves a purpose. And so did Louise Malcott's relationship with Laddie, right? Mm -hmm. Because, Because it does feel nice to be wanted, even if you know you don't want to be with that person. True. But it feels a lot better to be wanted when you want the person who's wanting you, which is what Joe gets and what Louisa May Alcott wishes she would have gotten. There are times when Louisa May Alcott refers that these ladies who Ladislas in her stories is playing with, they are like toys for him, mm-hmm. that they are his playthings, that he's not mm-hmm. serious with them. Mm-hmm. So that is why she can never marry him because she knows that he's not going to be serious with her. I was just thinking about that scene when Philippe comes to court, Joe, and the narrator mentions that Joe forget to compare him to Laurie because Friedrich, he replaces that ideal man that Laurie used to be. This proposal, it destroyed that ideal man. Jo- Laurie was Joe's model for masculinity, what yeah. man was supposed to be like. Yeah. But then she realizes that no, man is not supposed to behave the way Laurie is behaving in this proposal yeah. chapter. Friedrich, yeah. he proposes in a much more... A respective way. Yeah. He's mm-hmm. more respectful and he's humble and he's not expectant. You know, I mean, that's one of those things too, is Lori basically presents it in a way where it's like, no, you can't say no to me. And Friedrich is more like, you have no reason to say yes to me other than the fact that I love you. They're such opposites. And I think because Joe got so many influences from Lori and he from her, but then when Joe is with Friedrich, she gets influences from him that are mm-hmm. much more beneficial for Joe in the long run. Yeah. Same with Lori and Amy. They complement each other better. Well, it looks like we finished the chapter. <laughs> ah, what is our conclusion about this chapter? It's the blueprint for a red flag relationship. <laughs> exactly. Now, when we can get this, into an adaptation because it's freaking 2022 yeah and it's never been there we need a mini series and we need a good mini series or we yeah. need like a set of films like three films Ooh. like lord of the rings or like okay like how they've, they've been doing bridgerton on netflix mm, yeah why not wouldn't that be great because i mean that's how they're going to be doing i think they were going to be doing a new harry potter or something like yeah, that yeah i've was heard good. about that Full series with good script writers, right? Brown skinned Laurie, German guy to play Frederick, right? A 12 you know year old the, girl to play Amy or younger. You, the young you know, the Amy. I- irony was is that the guy they got to play Friedrich in this last film oh. really looked more like what Laurie should look like. A lot of people have said that, you know, isn't that weird? And people have said the same about Rosanna Brassi because he has brown skin. Oh, yeah, yeah. Super interesting. Yeah, I want now I totally want a series. I want I want Netflix to treat this like they did Bridgerton. Well, I think there are so many spicy things that can be taken from the book. Joe's sexual awakening in New York. Yeah. The making out scenes of Joe and Frederick in the sequels. You know, I, I think that part of the problem, too, like with um, like the 1933 and 1949, is I'm pretty sure they wouldn't have wanted to go too heavily German 
with Friedrich because that's true. The United States was not feeling very happy towards mm. Germany at that point. So you yeah. can't make the German guy like the knight in shining armor. I had a guest on the podcast. We had a long discussion about this because she had German ancestry. Mm-hmm. And then she talked about the Germans in Hollywood mm-hmm. back then in the 1930s. And now, because we have much more access to German actors yeah and there are some that are doing pretty well in hollywood hopefully we are getting some adaptations with german friedrich i would love that because louis mail love germany it is a german character why he should not be played by a german actor and laurie could be played by an italian actor or brown skin or, or an italian american actor right italian american actor right Either way, I mean, but but he needs to have dark hair and he needs Mm. to be olive skinned. It's part of the reason why Laurie feels isolated when he first moves to Concord. Yes. Because he is quite an outgoing guy in general. It almost feels like it's a bit strange that he now is so isolated when he comes there. Because I would imagine Laurie being someone who makes friends pretty easily. Yes. But then I'm thinking, well, maybe these people in Concord haven't really seen a guy with olive olive skin before. Yeah. Would that be the reason? I don't know. That would that would make sense. You know, we should start writing to Netflix and demand they make us a series. People would watch it. You know they would. Definitely. Anyone who listens to this podcast would watch it. Yeah. People in the Facebook group, they would watch it. You know, our book club is up to 182 members now. That's great. I mean, it kind of blows my mind because Mm. I think, you know, like when I created that book club, I thought it was only going to last like two months after that 2019 (laughs) movie. Because that's what it was made for. It was made just to discuss, you know, like to reread the book and discuss the other film adaptations on the way to this new one being released. People just keep joining I guess this is a forever, a forever <laughs> club now. We, and and more recently, we've gotten some more men joining the club, which I find I find that interesting because I hadn't personally actually spoken to a lot of men who mm. were little women fans, but our new members who are male are huge fans and very knowledgeable. It's an interesting thing to get a different point of view. You know, it's funny because I know two, no three Finnish people besides myself who are Joe and Friedrich fans. Mm-hmm. And then, honestly, most of the people that I've read, like in Finnish book blogs, they are Joe and Laurie shippers, or I don't go to those blogs anymore. I know two Joe and Friedrich shippers from Finland who are both men. One of them is a woman, but I just got to know her. But this is really mm-hmm. interesting because one of them is my old teacher, and he used to read a little woman series to his daughters, and he had like a big family. Mm-hmm. And then one day we just started to talk about Little Woman. This happened many years ago. And Anne of Green Gables, like he had read all the girl books from the 19th yeah. century. 